Is it clear, guys? So remember now, all of them positive in the first quadrant. Second quadrant, only sign is positive. The other two are negative. 10 is positive, and the other two are negative. Cost positive, and the other two negative. So you can call it the cost rule, or you can say all students take coffee. Right, cool. Right, so let's go back to our handout I gave you. So I'm here on this page now, right? Just after the negative angles, remember? Now, this is very important. For which values of theta is 1 over 10 theta plus 10 theta equal to 10 theta over sine square theta undefined? Now, guys, when will it be undefined? It will be undefined if you allow division by 0. In other words, if you allow 10 theta to be 0, or sine squared theta to be 0. If you allow that, then it will be undefined. Why? Because division by 0 is not allowed. So if it's 10 theta, what is theta? What you do is, guys, take your calculator. That's what you must do now. Right? And let's test all the angles. You're going to test 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270, and 360. Let's start with 0. So what is the 10 of 0? So let's see. 10 of 0 is 0. Can you see? 10 of 0 is 0. So, and the same here. Sine squared of 0. How do we do that one? Let's see. How do we do sine squared? Well, you open the bracket. You put in your sine of 0, right? Then you close your bracket and you square it. Is it clear? That is sine squared zero. And the answer is also zero R. Ah, so therefore the first answer is theta. If theta is zero, it will be undefined. Let's test 90. I don't see 90 here, but let's test 90. Let's see what's the 10 of 90. So the 10 of 90. Ah. Maths error. So the 10 of 90 don't exist. Therefore, you don't see 90 as an answer. Because the 10 of 90 is not allowed. Right. Let's go to 180. The, the 10 of 180. Right. 10 of 180 is 0. Uh-huh. So 180 is allowed. Right. And then the last one. Okay. The 10 of 270, of course, guys. 10 of 270, 10 of 270, is also a maths error, so 10 of 90, 10 of 270 are not allowed, and then the, the last one, 360, so the 10 of 360 is 0, ah, so there you are, so of course these three will also work for sine squared, so there you are, so for those three angles, Theta, those three angles, it will be undefined. Good. Let's look at a few examples here, right quickly. Right, if you look at the first one, it says, write the following as a function value of an acute angle. Now, at the moment, sine of 217 is obtuse. Let me just zoom in there quickly. Sine of 270, 270 is a reflex angle. How do we make it acute? Well, remember, 270 lies somewhere there. In the third quadrant, isn't it? Remember, first, second, third. Right. So in the third quadrant, no, no, I'm lying. It actually lies in the fourth quadrant, isn't it? Remember, this is 270 here. Yeah, so it lies in the fourth. Now, in the fourth quadrant, you will remember, we spoke about 360 minus theta. You see, in the fourth quadrant, 360 minus theta. So, what you do is, 360 minus 70 is 290. Can you see? 360 minus 70 is 290. That is where you start. Then you remember... That, where's my other page quickly? Then you remember, 
360 minus theta, then you remember the sine of 360 minus theta is minus the sine of theta, right? Cos of 360 minus theta is plus the cos. 10 of 360 is minus the 10. So, the sine of 360 minus 7, you remember, is minus the sine of theta. So here, my theta is 70. Remember? My theta is 70. So therefore, minus the sine of 70. So the sine of 290 is an acute angle is minus the sine of 70. You can check it out on the calculator if you don't believe me. Let's see what is the sine of 290. Sine of 290 is minus 0, 0.93. What is minus minus the sine of 70? And you'll see it is exactly the same answer. So there you are. Next one quickly, the 10 of 197. Right, where is 197? That is 90, 180. Oh, so it will be somewhere here, isn't it? In the third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, remember, we have 180 plus theta. 180 plus theta. So 180 plus 17 is 197. And what's the 10 of 90 plus? Well, I mean, sorry, 180 plus, there you are. 180 plus, the 10 of 180 plus is plus the 10 of theta. So there you are. Plus the 10 of 7, remember, that is theta. Plus the 10 of 17, right? And you can also use the cast rule. Remember, in the fourth quadrant, right? Sine is negative. In the third quadrant, 10 is positive. Then the last one, this one here quickly, uh, cos of 120, where is 120? 120 is in the second quadrant, right? So it is 180 minus theta. So tell you guys, 180 minus theta. So 120 is 180 minus 60. And of course, one, the side, the cosine, cosine of 180 minus theta is minus the cos of theta, right? So remember, this is theta, so it is minus the cos of 60. Is that clear, guys? And of course, in the second quadrant, cosine is negative. Okay, so I hope you understood that, right? Now, I want you to go through those examples, A, B, A, B and number 4. A, B, C, go through them on your own. C, can you do them? Right, good morning, grade 11s. Let's continue with our discussion on the reduction formula. So again, remember, very important, that you must remember all those reduction formulae. Right, remember how that 90 plus and 90 minus will change from sine to cos, from cos to sine. But the 180s and the 360s don't change. Cos remains cos, sine remains sine. All you have to remember here is where is which one negative. Then of course remember the negative angles. Only cos is positive and the other two are negative. Then of course you need to remember that in the first quadrant they're all positive. Second quadrant only sine positive. Third only 10 positive. Cos only Sorry, fourth only, cos positive. You need to remember this. The only one that doesn't behave according to that, you remember, is this one here where I told you, 90 plus, uh, for sine and cos, doesn't behave according to the cos rule. So you need to remember this. Okay, cool. Let's apply all of this now. So let's look at our first example. If I can just zoom in quickly. Look at our first example here. Simplify as far as possible. Sine of 360 minus theta times the sine of 90 plus theta, cos of 90 minus theta, cos of 360. So already, you should be careful. If you see 90 plus and 90 minus, what must you remember? That they are going to change. Sine will become cos, and cos is going to become sine. So you have to be very careful, and also remember, 
What happened with 90 plus and what happened with 90 minus? 90 minus both positive, 90 plus only cos positive. So therefore, and of course with 360 and the 360, it will not change. So clear guys? 360, you remember here with 360, they don't change. Sine remains sine, cos and then they don't change. So, therefore, Sine will remain sine, right? 360 minus theta becomes sine of theta, and sine 360 minus theta is, of course, if you remember, 360 minus theta is in the fourth quadrant, right? And in the fourth quadrant, you remember, only cos is positive. So, therefore, sine got to be negative. So, clear up. Right, then... 90 plus theta, remember sine becomes cosine, and I told you most early on that 90 plus theta, the sine of 90 plus theta is plus the cos. So there you are, plus the cos. Then the cos of 90, cos becomes sine. 90 minus theta is in the first quadrant. They are both positive. And then 360, cos remains cos. The cos in the fourth quadrant, Right, remember this is the fourth quadrant, and cos in the fourth quadrant, you remember, cos in the fourth quadrant is positive. So it's clear, guys. So it's clear where this step is coming from. And now you can cancel. I only see one negative, so the answer will be negative one because all those values will cancel. Okay, next one. Ten of one eighty plus theta. 90, oh, there I see another 90, so already I know. This is going to change to sine. That is 180, 360, 180 will not change. Is it clear, guys? So 10 will stay 10, but cos will become sine. S uh, sine will remain sine. 10 will remain 10. Is it clear, guys? Just the signs. Remember now? What? 180 plus theta is in which quadrant? 180 plus theta is in the third quadrant. Don't forget. And in the third quadrant, 10 is positive. So, therefore, that is why this one is a positive. You clear, guys? Then 90 plus, cos becomes sine. And remember, 90 plus is negative. There you are. 90 plus is, sorry, yeah. See here, cos of 90 plus is minus the sine. So the cos of 90 plus is minus the sine. Then this plus goes there. 360 is in the fourth quadrant where sine is negative. 180 minus theta is in the second quadrant where 10 is negative. Right, so you must remember that cos rule, remember? Then if I multiply, sorry, then 10, you remember is sine over cos, you remember that, 10 is sine over cos, so sine times sine is sine squared over cos, with a negative, don't forget, sine times sine is sine squared over cos, and what do you notice, the two terms are identical, so they cancel, therefore the answer is zero, then the last one, Write the following as a function value of a positive angle. And now remember, we're dealing with the negative angles now. Remember this here. This is now very important. So only one is positive, and that is cos. So let's see. So the cos of minus 40 is plus the cos of a plus 40. 10 of a minus 150 is minus the 10 of 150. Can you see, guys? And, and of course, here... What we, I'm going to discuss with this one with you just now. Just quickly this one. So minus 10, 150. And 150, you remember, is 180 minus 30. And 180 minus 30 is in the second quadrant where 10 is again negative. That's why the double negatives. And the minus of minus is a plus. And of course, the 10 of 180 minus 30 is plus the 10 of 30. This one, we need to switch them around. So here, with this one, just take note, if I do this sign, and I switch, but if I, like when I switch, I'm going to write 180 in front, 
and 10 at the back. So take note, minus 180 became plus 180 and plus 10 became minus because I took out a minus. Can you see guys? I took out a minus. Then this minus goes to the front. Is it clear now? Goes to the front and then of course sine of 180 minus theta is in the second quadrant. Sine is positive. Positive times this negative is a negative. Okay, please. Right, today we're going to focus on the negative angles. We can just zoom in here. The negative angles, we've done it before. The sine of a negative theta is minus the sine of a positive theta. And the cos of a negative theta is plus the cos. And the tan of a negative is minus the tan. So therefore, only cos is positive and the other two are negative. So please take note of that. Then on the next page of that previous handout, there I got an example here. Sine of minus theta, tan of 180 plus theta, cos of 180 minus theta, over sine of 180 minus theta, tan of 360 minus theta, and cos of a negative theta. Let's simplify so, the sine of a negative theta, you remember from the previous page, is minus the sine of theta, right? Let me just put it here to make it more clear. So, it is minus the sine of theta. The tan of 180 plus theta, remember, this is in the third quadrant, where, according to the cost rule, right, tan is positive. So, therefore, plus the tan of theta. The cos of 180 minus theta, this is in the second quadrant, where cosine is negative. And at the bottom, this, uh, 180 minus theta is in the second quadrant, where sine is positive. Ma uh, then, of course, 10 of 360 minus theta is in the fourth quadrant, where 10 is negative. And then, of course, cos of a negative angle is plus the cos of a positive angle. Now guys, if you count the amount of negatives here, one, two, three, I see an uneven number of negatives. And that is why we expect to see a negative answer, an odd number of negatives. Then signs will cancel, then will cancel, and cos. And therefore the answer is negative one. Okay. Then, angles can be greater than 360. By that I mean, if I can illustrate. If this is one revolution, which is 360, right? Then I can enter a second revolution. So I can go again and again and again and again. Now what happens in a case like this? Well, if you look at sine of 360 plus theta, which is this one here, back in the first quadrant, it is just, again, plus the sine of theta. The same with cos and the same with tan. Because it's back in the first quadrant, so all three are, again, positive. And you just basically ignore the 360, because it doesn't make any difference. Look at the first example quickly. So the cos of 360 plus x, right, will, rem will be plus the cos, because it's in the first quadrant. The sine of 360, remember it takes you back in the, 360 minus is back in the fourth quadrant, where sine is negative, right? Cos of minus x, you remember, is plus the cos. Sine of x plus 360, where do you say 360 plus x, people, or x plus 360, it doesn't matter. It is the same thing. Sine, of course, it's back in the first quadrant, so it's there you are, positive. I only see one negative in the problem. So therefore, the answer is negative 1. We were the angles of 90 plus and 90 minus, right? But remember now with 90 plus and 90 minus, 90 minus is in the first quadrant where all four are positive, but 90 plus is in the second quadrant. Now with 90 plus, you'll recall, the cast rule doesn't work. That you need to remember. With 90 plus, the cast rule don't work. So remember, with 90 plus, sine of 90 plus is plus the cos. Although you expect it to be negative, it behaves differently. And the same with this. The cos of 
So this must be sine here. So the cos of 90 plus is minus a sine. And remember with 90, sine becomes cos and cos becomes sine. So two changes here. We repeat, sine becomes cos, cos becomes sine, and it doesn't behave according to cos. Sine of 90 becomes plus the cos, although we expect it to be minus. And cos of 90 plus becomes minus. So please be aware of that. Those two differences there. If you look at the first example here, if I can just zoom in quickly. This is from your textbook, by the way. Right. The sine of 90 minus theta times the sine of theta over the cos of theta times the cos of 90 minus theta is then sine of... Now, the sine of 90 minus theta, remember, is first quadrant, so it becomes sine becomes cos, and it is positive, first quadrant. That remains sine. That remains cos. 90 plus is in the second quadrant, but remember, it becomes minus the sine. Remember, it doesn't behave accordingly. One negative in the entire problem, so therefore the answer is negative one. This one here, let me just try and zoom in again. Right. Cos of 180 minus x, 180 is in the second quadrant where cos is negative. Remember, it remains cos. 90 minus is in the first quadrant, the cos becomes sine and positive. 10 of a negative angle is minus the 10 of the positive angle. 180 plus is in the third quadrant where sine is negative. 90 plus sine becomes cos and of course in the second quadrant it behaves differently it is plus that all of them sir some of them will cancel but i count one two three negatives so expect a negative answer then cos and cos cancel sine and sine and the answer is minus the 10 right then next example Sine of theta minus 90. Now, what happens here, people? Theta minus 90, you will see it looks very different now. So, what we do is, if I can zoom in here, what we do is, we either apply this method, which I don't recommend. I rather prefer this method here. I'm going to focus on this method here, where you have 90 minus theta. You take out negative as a common factor. And then you switch those two. So minus 90 becomes plus 90. And plus theta becomes minus theta. Now it looks more acceptable. Then you're dealing with the sign of a negative angle. Is minus the sign of a positive angle. See what happens here. Now I apply the negative angle rule. And now I can take it further. 90 minus is in the first quadrant. Sign becomes cos. It is positive in the first quadrant, but it's already a negative so this, there, so therefore minus the cos. I prefer not to use this method, people, but you can go through it if you want to. The same with this one here, nine, theta minus 90. Again, I prefer this method here, where I'm going to take out a minus again, then minus 90 becomes plus. Plus becomes theta becomes a minus theta. So I'm dealing with the cos of a negative angle, which is plus the cos of a positive angle. And cos of 90 minus theta is plus the cos. 